This is Style, and I'm Elsa Clench, reporting on the design worlds of fashion, beauty, and decorating. We start with a collection from a man who's earned a reputation as one of America's most creative designers. New York designer Jeffrey Bean pays tribute to the circus in his fall collection. The show starts under Bean's big top tent, with short, colorful tunic coats that add to the carnival atmosphere. He uses animal prints, embroideries, and accessories to embellish his theme. And Bean's body-conscious silhouettes create a feline feeling that is enhanced by the cat-like movements of the models. It's loosely based on the circus, which um, I have been told is the greatest show on Earth. So that's quite a challenge. I love uh, showing fashion with the concept of theatricality. It's, uh, it brings another dimension to the clothes. Tell me about the shapes. They're close to the body? Mm, always glorification of the body. Um, there are some that are way, but uh, the fabrics they are cut in become very sensuous and fall to the body in the right spot. And what are the fabrics? Um, essentially wool jersey, which to me was the original stretch and is the most versatile fabric in the world, simply because it doesn't wrinkle and travel. They're double face uh, wools and crepes that, for the same reason I love, they're laces, where the world's oldest fabric is perhaps uh, the most modern fabric. It doesn't wrinkle either, weighs very little, and travels so well. What is the color story? Uh, for years, uh, I've shown black, and it is the basis of any woman's wardrobe, I think, and you begin to build color around that, a small amount of color, a lot amount of color, but uh, essentially black frames and defines what is around it. So it's very important. Then the other colors are deep, pale? Well, no, they're sort of rich Renaissance colors. Uh, they're golds and burgundies and forest green. And for evening? Well, all hell breaks loose uh, at the circus in the evening, and I hope it's not referred to as a zoo. But uh, it's a ride of colored textures and fabrics. Uh, lace, but the lace goes with uh, striped T-shirts. It's um, The evening collection is essentially around wool jersey T-shirts and what can happen to them. And dresses? Uh, I think there are fewer dresses this time, more jumpsuits, more suits. Uh, the dress seems to not have the versatility of suits or jumpsuits. So the big message is really the jumpsuit? Well, there's not such a message as there are suggestions of clothes that one enjoys. Uh, there's no dictate here. It's, it's glorifying the American woman and, and America. I call the collection, I mean, from the American circus, the, the glorification of things American. It's important that I express this at this particular moment. That's Jeffrey Bean with his full collection. Next, platform shoes. They're back. The new longer lengths call for an elongated leg, and platforms provide the proportion. After this, Wherever you travel, look for these brands and save on quality gasolines for less, plus a whole lot more. And now get $5 in free gas. Pick up your free Passport to Savings booklet for details and special savings, like quality lighters from BIC, now specially priced, and new STP flat fixer, just $2.99. We're on your way to convenience stores of Speedway. How did $1 become 5 by squirreling it away in Dreyfus' third century, the socially conscious fund with a predator's instinct for profits. Consider, if 20 years ago you started putting $200 each month into third century, you would have over $250,000 today. Look at these average annual returns. One, five, 10 years, your 48,000 invested grew into over a quarter of a million. One became five, what a nest egg. A fund for you and your family and a better America too. Third Century invests only in companies with a record protecting the environment, the consumer, worker health and safety. Call 1-800-551-9700 for information, a prospectus, and no sales charge, a big plus. 
plan ahead. Call 1-800-551-9700 and say, my future's in third century. Boop! Monster Vision brings you the outer limits, and our critics agree. They put up a very good show. I saw it. Watch out, TNT. We're back all night tonight. For decades, platform shoes have been making flashy fashion statements, colorful, outlandish, funky. Italy's Salvatore Ferragamo set the trend on its way in the 30s with extravagant beaded metallic and multicolored platforms. London's Vivian Westwood has been a fan of platforms since she started designing in the 70s. Now platforms are making a resurgence in the 90s. Designers say it's due to the new long straight skirts that demand a heavier shoe. In New York, Louis Del Olio says platforms were vital in his fall collection for Anne Klein. The platform shoe is important with longer lengths because it gives weight to the bottom. Instead of wearing a boot like everybody used to wear in the 70s, the platform shoe balances the long skirts, looks great with short skirts. Nicole Miller took today's popular menswear influence in fashion and transferred it to the foot. I was a strong believer in platforms, so all my shoes are platforms, and they're all spoofs on men's shoes. I've got, you know, spectator platforms, I had wingtip platforms, ski boot platforms, so everything has been like a man's shoe turned into a woman's platform. Donna Karen likes her platforms practical. She designs them with rubber soles. Absolutely, because, you know, we're running and we're on the go, and platforms are great, but, and they kind of make high heels work because they kind of raise you and kind of feel, make you feel long and leggy, but the whole idea is having that sporty feeling. In Paris, Claude Montana believes that a heavier shoe makes long skirts look modern. I've been doing, uh, you know, either like flat shoes or high heels with the, like slim soles, and I, I, I want a little, higher and thicker heels with a uh, platform, but not really platform, they were not that high. Christian Lacroix echoes Montana's feeling. High heels, but not very high platform shoes, like in the 70s. We have just a little bit, a little platform. Shoes are becoming more important as a fashion accessory. Yes, because uh, it's first an investment, it's really like a jewel, and uh, it gives the, um, the mood of the season, if you have the heel of the season or the color of the season, it's okay. It's like a jewel, really. In Milan, Mariucci Mandeli, who designs Patrizia, says platforms instantly make her fall outfits look snappy, especially if they have a longer skirt. Giovanna Ferragamo, who's following in her father's footsteps, also likes a stronger shoe. That looks very nice with the longer skirt. And also a pump with the platform, a, a not, not a high one, but a, you know, a little bit of platform, that is also very nice with that length. So it makes the look of the of shoe more substantial? Yes, yes it does. That's a look at platform shoes for four. And now, strong shapes in neutral colors from a prominent Spanish designer. Before Madrid designer Jesus Del Pozo puts the emphasis on easy shapes that caress the body. He plays with silhouettes, oversized coats open to reveal form-fitting jumpsuits, asymmetrical cuts accentuate the shoulders, waist and legs, and Del Pozo uses luxurious fabrics and monochromatic dressing for an elegant feeling that flows from day to evening. Las formas yo creo que como siempre son mis formas bastante geométricas. My shapes are geometric, with cutouts and décolleté, bare arms and bare backs. There are very few skirts in the collection, but lots of tight long dresses and many jumpsuits and pants. The long dresses often have slits to make movement easy. Why do you offer so many pants? So women don't have to worry about the question of skirt lengths? Pants are an option, but I think a woman chooses the skirt length that best suits her personality. There is such a variety of lengths on the market today that very often a woman will wear something short for one occasion, and for another, that same woman will wear something long. What shape are your pants? Normalmente, casi todos son anchos. For the most part, they are wide, especially at the bottom, and they are pleated. There are some narrow stretch pants in the collection, but not too many. What sort of jackets are you putting on top? It's sort of a game I'm playing with the silhouette, a game that blends a classic jacket shape with new details. 
rounder shoulders with shoulder pads, and intricate cuts that make the jackets look like sculpture. What are the fabrics you've used? I'm using a great deal of wool, lots of double face, then there are thick cottons, tool, and silk. Silk is the thread that runs through all my collections, and I'm also using stretchy knits and crepes. How important is evening in the collection? It comprises 50% of the collection, so it's very important. The colors are a little richer. I use lots of neutrals for day and evening. But at night, I like touches of gold, violet, reds, and browns to go along with the black. I use a lot of black in the evening portion of the collection. All very deep colors, why is that? These are the colors that I like, and I feel they are very consistent with the colors I always use. Now tell me about the bridal gown at the finale. It's un montaje de un tremendo volumen. It's voluminous. In tool, in pleated tool, it's off-white. The bodice is knit in cashmere and angora, and the tool veil wraps around the head in a shell shape. After all, a bride wants to look stunning. It's the day in a woman's life when she wants to look her most beautiful. That's Jesus Del Pozo with his fall collection. Coming up, the Lake Maggiore Island home of Italian fashion designer Paola Mazzotto. See it when we return. At 84 Lumber, we still believe in the American dream. So we've developed a way to make building your own home an affordable reality. 84 affordable homes across America, the most complete home building package on the market. Priced from $39.9 to $69.9. Now is the time to build. Our team of home specialists will work with you from start to finish. Begin today by visiting an 84 Lumber near you or call 1-800-359-8484. After examining, testing, analyzing, it's a fact. You can buy new Preparation H hydrocortisone cream with the maximum strength available without a prescription. It has a level of medicine that was prescribed by doctors for years. New Preparation H hydrocortisone cream. It's new, it's maximum strength, and it effectively relieves problem itch. New Preparation H hydrocortisone cream. Prescription strength without a prescription. Can you find the drug pusher in this picture? It's hard to believe kids this young are at risk because someone their age may be offering them drugs. Someone they think is their friend. Talk to your kids about drugs. Tell them that anyone who offers them drugs is not a friend. A kiss to fill a dream on My imagination Will drive upon that kiss Sweetheart, I ask no more than this Kiss to fill a dream on Your ship is in Crown Cruise Line Fashion designer Paolo Mozzotto's country home is an extraordinary island retreat on Lake Maggiore. She spends as much free time as she can relaxing there with her family, Carlo Borromeo and their children. The island has belonged to the Borromeos for hundreds of years. Mozzotto says part of the house dates back to the 12th century and was once a monastery. It was always kept uh, like uh, a convent uh, with monks. In fact, uh, the, in the structure of the house, you, you can see it was always a convent. Mazzotto tells me when the monks left, the Borromeo family bought the island and rented out the house. The most important person to live there was famed musician and conductor Arturo Toscanini. Mazzotto began refurbishing the house as a summer home for her family 15 years ago. She tells me it had been empty for quite some time and in need of much repair. I thought the house was a mess, it was very dark. But uh, the house, uh, we tried to give the, the feeling of a very light house because the the lake can be happy and can be sad. We try to get the happy feeling of the lake. The entrance hall is inviting with a beautifully inlaid 18th century lacquer table. 
Large family portraits hang on either side. And there are paintings of ancestors going up the stairs. These are only the, the ones we thought were more better looking, not so scary for the children. The living room, which was originally the monastery church, is now very bright, warm and cosy. Yes, this is because of the children. I think uh, I like uh, them to live in a very uh, light place, uh, happy, uh, with this feeling of light, of beauty. Of uh, This is also my idea in my fashion of beauty, uh, delicate, nothing too strong. Important pieces in the living room include large Baroque silver candelabras, an authentically restored tiled fireplace, and 18th century Chinese papiers. Your favorite piece in the living room is the secretary. It was made by small pieces of paper cut and attached to the wood. And this is a very special piece because it has uh, the scenes of uh, hunting and duels between uh, women. The dining room with its northern exposure is the darkest room in the house. Mazzotto brightened it by painting it in peach and blue pastels. Well, the dining room is very simple. It has beautiful chairs. Basically, the, all, the, all the paintings and the furniture are, come from the 18th century. The chandelier is from Murano. The chandelier is from Murano, as all the others uh, you see around. Um, always uh, the 18th century. And uh, I think they are very beautiful because they are not too heavy. Your bedroom was once Toscanini's studio. Yes, I think in the years became, uh, after Toscanini became already the, the basic bedroom because it was so big. The bedroom has beautiful views of the lake. It's sparsely decorated, yet ornate with gilt carved wall moldings. Mazzotto said she enjoyed restoring the house and contributing to its rich history. But she especially loves its enchanting island atmosphere. The lake is very good on my nerves. I come here and I totally I sleep hours the whole day. And uh, I do nothing. I'm perfectly happy. I feel like I'm on heaven. That's Paola Mazzotto and her island home. Still to come, the collection from New York's new design sensation, Byron Lars. And it's coming up after this. Nice try, Ginny. What's wrong? Oh, you have arthritis? Me too. It's hard to grip your racket, isn't it? Here, my doctor told me about this, Motrin IB. It's the same medicine as in prescription Motrin in non-prescription strength. It's great for minor arthritis pain. And one Motrin IB works as well as two regular aspirin. Try it. You'll have the advantage next set. Motrin IB, the relief of Motrin in non-prescription strength. There's a growing respect for life in this country. You can feel it in the renewal of the family, in the return of basic values. And with this new respect, many people, when faced with an unexpected pregnancy, are deciding to make an extra place at life's table. Because many people are coming to realize that everyone deserves a chance to be born. Life, what a beautiful choice. Yo, come on, move this. Shake that body. Shake that body. Baby, let me show you how to do this. You got it. Move this. You got it. Move that. Shake that body for me. Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick. Super rich, long lasting, and 60 fabulous shades. I'm Bella Shaw. Next week, we'll talk with Bruce Willis about his new film, Death Becomes Her. Also, TV heartthrob Luke Perry on his new movie, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That show is today, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on CNN. New York designer Byron Lars salutes legendary flyer Amelia Earhart in his fall collection. His aviator-inspired outfits are some of the snappiest of the season. He does leather bomber jackets that hug the waist and flare into a peplum. And he makes parkas that look like parachutes. Seen from a distance, Lars' favorite prints could be florals. But up close, they're actually airplane motifs. Lars says Erhardt's many adventures captured his imagination. I think um, she represented a really liberated and free 
adventurous woman, and that's something that I wanted to reflect in the collection, that same spirit. There is a lot of menswear influence, simply because Amelia wore very menswear-inspired clothing. What's the predominant shape? A lot of exaggerated hourglass shapes, um, a lot of play with long and short, like a really long shirt dress with a really short tie to go with it, just to exaggerate the length of the, the dress that it was worn with. The challenge is finding a way to make long work in the day without victimizing the wearer. Wear. I tried to make it work by putting um, a panel in the back that kind of allowed the legs to move. Because sometimes you'll find two in long skirts, if you put a slit in it, it just stays open. And the fabrics? We used some woolens, lots of like really menswear tailored woolens, some Glen plaids. Um, there was some stretch, but not very much stretch in it. Most of the, the freedom of movement was achieved through the cut, more so than the fabric. Shirts and pants are important in the collection. Probably the most important item in my collection would be shirtings and shirt dresses. And I mean, it just completes the look to have like a shapely little jacket over it. We um, did a lot of like really feminine tops with like bra cups built in. And it just, to juxtapose that, like a, a long man's trouser just seemed like right for that. What do you see for Byron Lars in the future? I guess succeeding on a level. As far as designer merchandise is, con goes, we're considered to be like in the low end in price point, and hopefully high end in image. <laughs> um, so hopefully like, I'll bring more of that to fashion, more high image, but um, affordable price point. That's Byron Lars with his full collection. That's style for this week. Please stay tuned for all the news as CNN Weekend continues. Next week, I'll be back with more news of fall fashion. Until then, thank you for joining me with style. I'm Elsa Clench. And next week on Style, restoring antiques and makeup from Paris. If you missed any of today's style, you can tune in at 2.30 Eastern Time this afternoon. Now let's take a, uh, take a quick 